Well, welcome to The Boiling Point. We are on the road and the show must go on. So we're going to go back and talk with Jude Wolf. Now, Jude, in the last two episodes, he's actually gotten over 2,000 views. So make sure you check him out. This week, he's going to be talking about superheated steam and how that it can be used. Here we've got an example of a system generating saturated steam. We can see the steam is quite visible. We've got condensate droplets coming out, and basically that means we're at a saturated condition. In fact, any time the steam is in contact or has access to water, it's saturated because any additional heat added to the steam or the water will simply evaporate more water. However, if we take a point where the steam is away from the water source, like in this pass of our coil, if we add heat once the steam is out of the presence of the water, we can actually take that steam to a superheated condition. This is useful in applications where we're using the steam for mechanical purposes and we don't want any condensate droplets uh, affecting turbine vanes or things of that nature. Uh, it's also useful for sending the steam long distances because we'll have less condensate formation in that pipe. So by applying heat to the pass of our miniature superheater, we can generate superheated steam. And we'll see that on our gauge. The first thing that we'll see is the droplets of water coming out of the exit will stop. And then as we continue to increase the temperature of the steam, uh, the steam will become invisible and there'll be no evidence of condensate at all. Then we can begin to look at our temperature gauge down there and actually see that we're well above the saturated temperature for the steam at the pressure we're generating it. It's important to know that the steam pressure is not any higher at the thermocouple, but the temperature is. So when we see the elimination of the condensate droplets on the outlet and the steam itself becomes completely invisible, we're well above the saturated steam table temperature. If we're trying to use steam to heat a process, like in a kettle or a heat exchanger, superheated steam's actually a bad thing to have because it doesn't transfer heat with the same rapid force as the condensation process will. Um, however, for mechanical energy, for running a pump, running a turbine, uh, using it for applications like that, being superheated gives you more mechanical energy and eliminates the issue of condensation in the process. If you have a typical package fire tube boiler or many water tube boilers, you aren't generating superheated steam and they're not designed to. But if you've got a superheater or an application for superheated steam, it is important to understand that your superheating section has to stay drained and with flow through it uh, at all times because if you stagnate that, that superheating, superheater section can quickly overheat and be damaged. Well, I appreciate Jude filling in for us the last three episodes and uh, talking on this one a little bit about the superheated steam. If you haven't seen any of his videos, please make sure you check, especially that Boiler University one that is right here. And please check us out on Facebook as well as YouTube and find us on Twitter and maybe share a tweet. And we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. Ooh, oh!